Hello and welcome to the Healthcare and Complicated YouTube channel. Let me ask you and remind you to check all the previous content, subscribe to the channel, and share this amazing content with your communities in healthcare. Also, acknowledge our partners and supporters. And today, I have a very special guest leader for you. We have Dr. Hans Kluge, is the WHO Regional Director for Europe. Hans, how are you? Thank you, Joe. Very nice to be on the program. Thank you so much. It's nice to see you. We saw each other very recently in Chicago, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Seems a long time. It seems a long time. Yeah. Time flies. And today we are here to address the topic, the main threats to global health. And the first question that I have for you is, what are the main threats to global health at present? Thank you, Joe. And you know, there are several threats, but let's look at the big picture the medicine that we need most today is peace peace is the most important medicine i mean we have a devastating war here in our region in ukraine with a global impact i just had this morning the ambassador of south africa who was telling it has global consequences also on the african continent with the export of grain fertilizers the inflation Ukraine is our top priority on several aspects. One out of 10 Ukrainian people are estimated to have a moderate to a severe mental health condition. So not only physical conditions. We know that from our annual health survey, one out of three households has difficulty accessing medicines. And they're not even speaking about the front line. So we need peace. That's one big one. Second big one is what we call non-communicable diseases. These are chronic diseases like the cancer, the diseases from the heart and the vessels, diabetes, respiratory diseases. Because what we saw during the COVID-19 is that there has been a interruption, for example, of cancer screening services. And we are very, very concerned that we are going to see a lowering of the survival of the cancer patients and diagnosing patients with cancer in a much later stadium. So we have to go back to the root causes of chronic disease, which are four big ones. Alcohol, tobacco, poor diet and lack of physical activity. We just published a survey with the OECD, which says if in the European Union alone, everyone would do, actually, Joe, like I'm doing, 25 minutes moderate physical activity a day, I'm biking every day, it would save up to 17,000 lives in the EU alone. And then the third big one, obviously, is the climate change, which is a whole story on itself. Brilliant. Thank you so much for highlighting these major, well, worldwide issues, but also, yes. um, yeah, uh, 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 the lack in peace is always the health education. We need to do more to get the awareness, get people active and everything. What you mentioned is really powerful. It's kind of simple, but it's difficult to promote because everyone is different and they have their own expectations and everything. And health seems to be complicated, but actually it isn't. Moving on, uh, how do you see the health workforce crisis and how can we fix it? Joe, I tell you, every single minister who's coming here, today we have Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Health of Czech Republic, but I just came from Slovenia. Every single minister is telling me the health workforce crisis is not something of tomorrow, it's there already. We published a year ago the first pan European report on the state of health and care workforce in the European region. And we know, for example, that from general practitioners, 44% are close to retirement age. Then we have health workforce migrating and a huge burnout since the COVID-19. Actually, it's the same in my workforce. We did a survey, up to 30% of WHO staff as well is at risk or has a burnout. So there is no health without health workforce. Here, as I love to discuss with the president of HIMSS, 
my good friend Hal Wolf always, the digital technologies can be of a tremendous help. I was recently in North Sweden in a huge area, only one person per square kilometer. And there the emergency services were basically run by nurses. But with digital tools, examinations, and the treating doctor who made the diagnosis as well was sitting hundreds of kilometers away. The same, I'm the first treating director actually, Joe, who went to Greenland. Greenland, huge territory. I mean, and with, with the ice and the winter, inaccessible during periods, you know, of, of, of in the year. But again, I saw daily dermatology, daily ophthalmology. So we haven't explored yet the potential really of digital tools and artificial intelligence taking into account. There are also risks, right? We need to regulate those. But this is definitely one. So the digital tools and then expanding task profiles. I know that in several countries, medical doctors, I'm one of them, sometimes too conservative, you know, to give some tasks to the nurses. Doctors have to give more to the nurses, nurses to the community workers. So we need to expand our task, but it all starts with appreciation. What every person wants of us is to be appreciated. Yes, money is important, of course. If you have really a very low salary, you're going to migrate to another country because you want to give your children a better education. But let's not underestimate a healthy work-life balance, particularly as you have a feminization of the workforce, right? It's not like my father, he's 88 years, a surgeon, he still works. He works 24 seven. He doesn't know what to do with free time. This has changed, maybe for the good. So that number of issues that we have to diagnose and then to take very seriously. Whenever I meet a prime minister or a head of state, I ask them to express public appreciation for the doctors, the nurses, the midwives, and to remunerate them accordingly. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Really, really important. And we really seen that with the pandemic, how crucial the workforce is, the nurses, the doctors are, of course, very, very important. But without the nurses, we, no one would be here. And the support workers is not just the qualified people, is also the unqualified people, the assistants, the people sure. that actually support the nurses and the doctors. So yes. yeah, tremendous, yes. tremendous impact. Absolutely. And the social, like you say, and the social workers in the elderly homes. We left so many elderly people behind in the elderly homes. Those social workers, the family members. So thank you for raising this very important point, John. Brilliant. Moving on to the third and last question is what can we do to offer better health? to the worldwide populations? That's a big one, uh, another very, very big one. So obviously, as you can imagine, Joa, we have been thinking a lot about this post COVID-19. You know, a key word is resilience. I like it. What does it mean, resilience? Resilience means you get the punch, but you come back stronger. That's what we have to be. And I see three elements. One is resilient people. We saw, for example, that the people with obesity or with other diseases were more prone to die from the COVID-19. So the persons, myself, need to build that internal resilience. And we know the big killers. They are tobacco, the biggest killer, including heated products, alcohol, lack of physical activity, and poor diet. And there we can do a lot. I always say, the most cost-effective public health tool is very cheap. 25 minutes exercise a day. So we need resilient people. Number two, we need a resilient health system, which is built on primary health care. Hospitals are important, but you know, 70% of the patients going to the emergency service can be helped by family doctor or a nurse. It's cheaper, it's closer to the home of the patients. We need to build that resilience, as we already discussed, appreciate our health workforce and have strong data. And then the third element of resilience, so remember we have resilient people, a resilient system, is to be climate resilient. And again, it does need to cost a lot of money. I'm speaking to you, Joe, from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's a great example. How many green parks people are stimulated for physical activity? 
there are everywhere very safe lanes for biking right we have to really stimulate to be climate resilient and for that we need everyone on board including urban architects and other sectors but it's all doable what we need to do is to have the youth on board because it's the youth which can hold us un governments accountable that ultimately they want a better future for their children than today brilliant fantastic and thank you so much i've been in copenhagen in denmark several times but also the nordic countries really lead the way in terms of health you know i'm very when i talk to clients around the world i always say look at the finnish look at denmark look at norway because you are really leading the way in terms of improving um overall population health increasing yeah. those behaviors access to parks many many things the uh, bike lanes e e everything to encourage healthy behaviors it, it is fantastic it's very important that you actually mentioned that and we yes. came to the end of the interview we could speak for hours i could stay here all afternoon with you i know you are busy you have to go i have to go to one last little question which is i expect a short answer but is the big question with regards to my mission and challenge with the channel to make healthcare uncomplicated. How can we make healthcare uncomplicated? How can we make healthcare uncomplicated? By putting the people in the center, Joao. We, my father did it already 50 years ago. Ask the patient. The best doctor is the patient. Put the patients in the center, not the doctor, the patients and it will be simplified. That's brilliant. That's what we need, the simplification, the simple answer. Thank you so much. And oh. appreciate your time, your magnificent insights. It was a truly special episode. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and I will see you soon somewhere around the world, right? Absolutely. Take care of yourself. Go. Thank Take you. Care. Stay there. Stay there one sec. I'm going to wrap up. To all our viewers and listeners, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, share this amazing content with your communities around the world. And I'm going to post Anne's uh, uh, socials in here. He's very active on social media, LinkedIn and Twitter. Connect with him and I'll see you all next week. Yeah.